that back there, I guess. Hi, uh, Barrett Taglarino here. I would like to talk about this example of chord tone soloing today. It's uh, from Robin Ford's version of Help the Poor. Um, I wrote a book called Chord Tone Soloing back in 2003. And at the time, there weren't a lot of mentions of this topic online. I couldn't find much. And there wasn't really a book dedicated to it for guitar. But now, you know, 15 years later, there are probably thousands of videos and dozens of books about it. So I guess it was a good idea. <laughs> at the time, I got in on the ground floor. Anyway, um, the basic idea is that a guitar student has to learn their scales. And that's usually pentatonic at first. And they improvise with that. But it has the potential to get a little monotonous. And it doesn't uh, necessarily address any chords that are outside of a particular key. So the next step to handle this is to learn your arpeggios, which are the notes of a chord played one after another instead of all at the same time. So even if you don't have anybody playing the chords for you, you can still create the sound of the chords and the progression in your solo if you use the arpeggio the right way. And you could use a solo, you could play a solo that's nothing but arpeggios, and I've, you've probably heard some like that, like some sweeping arpeggios, or um, there's one at the very end of Hotel California, like... Uh, Um, that's cool, and you could do that, but it also can be limiting. You wouldn't want to do it on every song, that's for sure. So with this book, the idea is to incorporate the scales and arpeggios together, especially using fragments of the scales, a few notes at a time, to target the chord tones as they appear and lead into them. And so, hence the title, Chord Tone Soloing. So, um... The scale fragment moving toward that chord tone creates an expectation that is then immediately satisfied. And then that sensation of just aimlessly kind of meandering up and down the scale, because that's the scale that fits, that feeling goes away because now the scale has a destination. So the uh, Help the Poor is a really nice example. Uh, it's in D minor. And there's a spot where the, his chords, anyway, go from G7 to B flat 7. And he targets the third of the G7. That's B. And then the fifth of B flat. And the seventh of B flat. So I, I want to show you how that works. So first off, we need the D minor scale. Tenth position, roots on the tenth, twelfth, tenth fret on string six, four, and one. And also the pentatonic scale is right under that, I'm sure you know that. And also notice that if it's a blues scale, you have an A flat on the thirteenth fret of string three. There's another one down there on the 11th fret of string 5. And that makes it a D blues scale. And now uh, to get those chords to come out in the solo, let's learn the arpeggios for them in the same spot. So we have a D, I'm sorry, a G chord right here, right? Pattern 2 root on the 5th and 3rd string strings on frets 10 and 12. So the root is here, and I'm going to play that with the second finger so I can get the third on the ninth fret, fourth string. Fifth is D, and then we have the minor seventh in a dominant chord. And then the same thing an octave higher looks like this, G, B, D, and F. Okay, that's G7. And then B flat seven, let's play the closest one for now. That's pattern one. 
roots on the 13th fret of string 5 and the 11th fret of string 2. So you got uh, root, 3rd, major, perfect 5th, minor 7th again, and then another root here on the 11th fret, and then the 3rd and 5th on the top string. I'll put those diagrams up. Now it helps to be able to count in order to play those target chord tones on time. But uh, for this lick, if you can't really count, you can still get the timing eventually, you know. So the lick starts with eighth notes from the and of three. So we're going to um, target the major third of G with a bend. One, two, three, and. And then uh, on beat four is a D. And then we're going to bend up to the the uh, fifth of G, uh, B flat seven. Oh. So we're bending up to those two chord tones. And that's on the and of four, right? Because the chord is anticipated. One, two, three, and four. So we got one, two, three, and four, and one. And then uh, on beat two, one, two, and three, we're going to have two sixteenth notes. So that's and one, uh, two, three, four, and one, two, e and, right? Two, e and. And so that means on beat three, we'll have that A flat note there. And what's cool about that is it's not only is it the seventh of B flat, which is the chord going on, but it's also that blue note in D. And I think that might be why Robin likes it so much, because he comes back and does it again at the same spot the next time it comes around. He hits that note. So that's very cool. Let me just, uh, well, actually, I think I played it at the beginning of the video. Let's do it again and see if I can do it, you know. back and memorize the rest of it. I really like that solo. But uh, maybe you're thinking, you know, that's just Robin Ford, man. He's too slick, too jazzy. But actually, a lot of players do this exact thing. Even the same note choice, same chords and everything. Uh, if you listen to um, Jeff Beck's... <laughs> Uh, come dancing on the wired album and it does exactly the same note as the target sort of in its own in his own uh, unique kind of way it's, it's all sounds like this so there's the a flat down there on the first fret of string three and uh yeah, he targets that A-flat several times, too. So I do the same thing. Whenever I have um, a flat sixth chord in a minor key, and that's a non-diatonic chord. The diatonic chord is actually B-flat major 7. So I think people put that, put that chord in their progressions just so that they can hit that A-flat note. And uh, you can actually, you can put it in major, right? If you had a if you had a B flat seven in D major, the same thing would work, would sound great. So I try to go for that when I whenever it happens, and I, you know you got to learn it in some different keys. Uh, and what you're trying to do is get it. I like to make it a little bluesy, I should say. Uh -huh. 
And uh, there are a couple of other places where that can be done. The obvious one is on the four chord in a blues, right? And it gives you that traditional diminished sharp four diminished sound. But even if that chord isn't there, you can just use it on the G7. And it sounds really good. Um, also on that, if there's a two chord. So that would be E7 in the key of uh, D. Um, so let's talk about that one later. Maybe I'll do another video where I demonstrate a lick that does that. Anyway, in all cases, um, you can see that it really helps if you know your scales and your arpeggios. There are some other choice notes that I kind of tend to go for. And uh, if you look at the book, Chord Tone Soloing, it has all of the triad arpeggios, all the seventh arpeggios, as well as the fancy extended and altered arpeggios and the... the uh, theory that you need for figuring out which ones to use. And uh, after that big section in the middle of the book, it has about eight chapters of exercises at the end to help you learn how to apply them and to program your reflexes to do all this stuff with proper timing, right? Because, well, if I can let you in on a secret, the goal of the book and the goal of your study should really be just nailing your timing because all the coolest notes, they're not cool if you hit them at the wrong time. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that one tune, uh, Robin Ford's ex example is a really good one, but it's just an example. And this video is just an example. It's like a trailer, 10 minutes, a 10 minute trailer to an actual movie that would be 20 hours long or longer if I wanted to show you the complete uh, vocabulary of arpeggios and scales and how to analyze everything. So please come back uh, and I'll do another video on this or a similar topic. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey, yeah. Got to get that one line in there. Back like that. Thank you.